All right, so once you have all your pieces cut out for um, this Christmas cookies scrapbook layout, uh, we're gonna go ahead and assemble our cookie pieces and our elements first, and then we'll put them all on the page together. So you should have uh, your cookies, your baking utensils, just go ahead and sort your pieces so that you're kind of like organized and ready to assemble. Um, there should be, those are the centers of your cookies. There should be, I'm missing a cookie bottom somewhere in there. Here we go. So cookies, the frosting. Um, you should have multiple pieces of this um, gingerbread man and it's going to be um, layered so that you can see the red through his little buttons and then the brown or dark black goes in the very back so that you see his little smiley face through there. So there's your cookie. And you can also pop dot him for just a little bit of like fluff or dimension when you put him on the page if you want. Uh, this is the handle for your whisk. You should have a rolling pin and this little brown piece to go over that for the wood. Um, there should be a circle to go with this little pinwheel candy. You should have your text. And I'm just gonna put that out of the way for a second. Looks like I'm missing part of my text. I don't know where it went. Oh, it's right here in green, duh. Okay, so there's Christmas cookies. And then this is actually the center of your bow. You should have a couple gumdrops and your mistletoe and I thought there were more red dots for the outsides of our cookies I might have lost those I might have to go back and make them or I they didn't cut out for me so this goes in the center of that and I'll have to make the red dots later but anyway um we're gonna go ahead and assemble these and then I'll show you um how I choose my pattern papers I just had a Christmas collection that I just kind of chose some scraps from um, because the pattern paper is not going to be the focal point of this and then we'll do a border just from these doodle bug um, Christmas papers it's uh, let it snow and I was thinking either the um, the hearts here or um, the stars it might be a mix of the two since there isn't anything on there that's like there's no doubles for me to do both sides of the paper um, I might end up actually just using this for the bottom too I'll have to look and see what else I have for scrap um, paper and then maybe some remit or rickrack if we've got time. Okay, let's go ahead and start assembling. So I have the Barely Art Glue and it works really well for most paper piecing things. It seems to be fairly low liquid. I mean, it's a liquid glue, but it seems to be fairly low moisture for the most part. I haven't had any issues with wrinkling or anything. And I just, this fine tip makes it super easy to just get into all the little edges and things. This one's not too fine of detail, but like on this parts of the whisk or whatever, you can get right in there. Um, I just keep the needle inside the nozzle and then kind of swish it around to get it to clear out and I'm usually good to go. It doesn't matter how long I let it sit there. So I'm just going to run some glue on the back of the rolling pin piece and put that together. If you want to ink anything, um, this would be the time to do that before you actually start assembling pieces. I'm not going to ink anything on this one, so I'm going to just move right on through. I think I'm missing parts of that too. I don't know what happened to my, all my red. So I'm missing parts of this bow too. It's supposed to have the little tails. I'm thinking a grandkid got into stuff. Okay, so I'm just basically putting pieces together. Now that I've got them organized, I can kind of just pick up and glue and then put it right back. Let it dry for a second. So finish that pinwheel. It, I'm gonna go ahead and do some pop dot on this guy. Um, let's move this out of the way. The gummy drops or the gum drops were just on top of this and this was actually gonna go over the top of a uh, photo. So I think I'm gonna pop dot those so that I can just glue this to the photo when it's time. These kind of get glued as a little border so I'm gonna wait till I'm ready to put that on the photo. These can get glued um, and I'll, I'm gonna put mine together without photos just to show you what it looks like as it's all completed and then you can um, add photos to yours as you go 
or when you're ready. I think I got that backwards. Okay, so there's that. And this piece here, hopefully we still have volume. My earbud just died. Um, I'll double check in a second. Okay, so there's the two little pieces of holly. I'm missing my berries too, so I'm gonna have to cut a bunch of red or double check the pile because something fell somewhere. I could have swore I had all that. Um, so let's do these gumdrops. We're gonna, so we're gonna pop dot the gumdrops. I'm gonna, I've got these foam dots that I bought off Amazon. And unfortunately I don't really like them. They're not very thick. So what I do is I just uh, take the top off of one and then double them up. So I'm just gonna put a stack of two underneath each gumdrop. Um, and I'm gonna leave that backing on there for right now because I've got to still put this over the photo and on the page. I'm just going to put a little bit of glue right here to hold it to my to my snow or that frosting. So I'll put that right there. Actually, I'm not super happy with that placement. I'm going to move my these ones. They stick good. They just aren't very thick. There we go. Okay, so a little bit of glue on the bottom there, and I'm going to put that on top of the frosting. You can determine like how much um, or what order you want your colors to go in there. I think I'll do orange, green, yellow, blue. And I'm going to go ahead and kind of put those down first and then put my pop dots on the back of them. I just want them to kind of have a little bit of dimension on my page. It doesn't have to be a ton. A little bit of overlap isn't terribly there. It kind of gives them a little bit more of that stacked look. It'd help if I didn't mess with them while they were drying. I'm gonna put that one on backwards with the texture. Okay, so there's that. And then I'm just gonna add some pop dots to the back. Just in preparation of when I actually put them on the page. Um, a little bit of dimension is kind of fun when you're making a scrap of page. Some people do lots of dimension. You can work with metal. There's like all those different Tim Holtz metal embellishments. Like you could really get pretty bulky and it's kind of fun. Okay, so there's the gumdrops. Those are gonna go on like that and I'll probably pop dot in the corner of the frosting just so it's got the full dimension when I actually put it on the photo frame. I'm gonna set that aside. Um, I think I'm gonna pop dot the cookies too just because either the that frosting, let's do both. I'm gonna do the frosting and the heart. So put two pop dots on this and then I'll just use one big one for the center of the heart and then I've got to go cut those red dots again because I don't know where they went I struggled with the red for some reason okay so that cookie's done do this cookie and then we just have the gingerbread man and we can start assembling. So I guess we need to glue the whisk still. I kind of like to just get all my elements done so that I can play with them on the page and kind of move them around and see where they need to go. I kind of already do that digitally, but then to see it in real life, sometimes that changes it. So um, having all your elements done and ready just makes the whole process of putting your page together a little bit faster. Okay, so there's those cookies. Let's pop dot. Let's glue this and then we'll pop dot the gingerbread man and be ready to start laying out our stuff. Whoop. Okay, so there's our whisk. Just kind of pressing the paper to get the edges all lined up. Put that aside and then our cookie. I think I want, you still wanna be able to see the black through there. So I'm just gonna double check that if I pop dot this red, it should be okay. So I'm gonna put one here. And I think if I just do it in singles, but I do each of the layers, that'll give it the double look with these flatter foam dots. 
So I'm gonna do one set of foam dots there and put them on as red. Just kind of line up my edges and then press. And then do the same to the back of the red. And I'm gonna go in just a little just so it gives it a little bit more support and doesn't just squish where those dots go. You can kind of see the paper sag if you start to get too high. So I'm just gonna offset my glue dots just a little. Like the first glue dot was there and the second one's just in a little. I'll line that up with the black. Or brown, whichever you chose. I did a dark, dark brown just because I had a scrap in that color. It's kind of offset, but it kind of gives them a little shadow, so that's okay. So then there's your cookie. And we are ready to start putting things on the page. So I chose green for my background, just because the green and red is a little bit more festive and it kind of was a good contrast to that brown that I chose for my photo matting. So you should have a four by six or four and a half by six photo size. And I cut um, pattern paper. So I cut this a quarter inch bigger than the photo. So this would be four and th three quarters, 4.75 by 6.25. So I go a quarter bigger each way. And then this is another quarter on top of that. So this one ends up being a half inch bigger than your photo both directions. Um, if you don't wanna do the math, I usually just hold a photo on top of there like you can, and then just cut until you get the, um, the framing that you want just right. So basically my photo is gonna go on this and this is how I'm gonna mount this on my paper. So I'm gonna go ahead and glue this solid matte down. I usually do a solid matte in either a darker or either dark black, brown, or white. And then I do my pattern paper. And then that way, this is just kind of like a decorative frame around your photo. So your photo is going to have a little bit of a border once you put it on there too. I don't have a Christmas photo handy to show you what that looks like, but I think you get the idea. And in the file, there's actually like a digital pre-done layout so that you can see where I'm going with this other than the pattern paper. So there's the other four by six photo. It was going to be on this side. This one's going to be on this side. Cookie goes over here somewhere. I'll turn my thing back on. And then I've got the two little three and a half by five or three and a half by three and a half photo mounts. And I just chose some Christmas paper that I had that was left over from that doodle bug collection. There's some reindeer and Santa Claus. You're not really gonna see most of that pattern unless you chose to make a border out of it. So I just chose Christmas papers for the colors mostly and kind of the idea of what you can see behind it, but I'm not overly worried about what the pattern was. Snowflakes, cookies, Christmas. It's a little bit of everything. I'm So then I'm just putting this background, centering it top, bottom, left, right, as best as possible. Finish those two photo mats, and then this is your last one. And it was the four and a half by four and a half. So this piece is actually four and three quarter by four and three quarter, and then this one would be five by five, the pattern paper itself. And I wish I had more of this cookie one because that's what I would have used for my border on here, like some pattern paper elements, but I didn't have any more of that. So, okay. So then the words Christmas cookies are going to go across, or Christmas is going to go across the top up here. We're going to have this photo mat right here with these gumdrops. We're going to have these cookies over here. This is going to go down here with the mint. Sorry for the train. Happens all the time. I can't even plan it. There's that. This one goes over here behind the cookie. He's gonna have the holly in his hair once we figure out where the holly went to. Here, let's skip this over. There we go. Now you can see the whole thing. It's kind of overlapped, but that's the only way to fit it in the frame. And then cookies goes down here. This is gonna go up here with the bow, which I need to finish. I'm gonna go cut some red out. And then the cooking utensils and these two photo mounts like this, okay? So the idea is I've got all that. I need the pattern paper. I was originally gonna do this border. While I cut out some red, I'm gonna dig for one, see if I can find something else that's Christmassy in my stash. Um, and I basically just want like 
a border right here. So if I can't find that, I'll just use this, but until, I'm gonna go look one more time for something, either like, I got this candy cane paper, but I don't think I have enough of that left, but something to just to give it a little pop on the top and the bottom, and then we will finish this up. Okay, so now we're ready to go ahead and start assembling um, everything onto the paper. Uh, we kind of pretty much have a good layout of what we want. I went ahead and cut the rest of my red things here, so I've got his parts and the rest of the bow. I'm gonna leave all these little dots on my mat until I'm ready to put them on the cookies in just a second. But I think I'm gonna go ahead and set everything else first. Um, I found this pattern paper that has um, the Christmas like kind of just graphics on one side and the and words and then the stripe on the other. And that, I think that's what I'm gonna use for the border. So I'm gonna just cut like a, about an inch, inch and a half to go down here along the bottom. And I'm gonna go ahead and do that first so that we can lay it across the paper and then start assembling everything else. It just kind of finishes the paper or the page and makes it look a little bit more crisp. So I think an inch and a half gets most of those words. I'm gonna come up just a little bit, like an inch and three quarter. And you can decide based on your pattern paper or um, just follow the exact the same measurement. So this is a 12, 12 inch across piece of paper. I'm gonna do it at 1.75 or one and three quarter. And I'm gonna do that twice and look at it and see if I need. I kinda wanna trim it again at the season's greetings, just so they're kinda the same as far as the graphic as it goes across. Eh, it's probably not a big deal. 1.75 again. You can, um, Pay attention to your pattern and do it that way. If you wanted to, the, the issue with that is you might, um, you're gonna waste paper. And then I'm gonna also cut this at about, I think, like candy cane strip size, maybe a, about a half inch to go across the top of the paper. So there's a half and another half. Okay, so I'll set this aside. And these are gonna go up here across the top. And then these are gonna go across right there. If you have ribbon, you could also use that as a border or to put on your paper. I don't know if I'm gonna do that yet. Sometimes I wrap my photo mounts with it. I'm just gonna wait and see. I don't wanna make it too busy, so I'm gonna wait and see how everything kind of plays out here. Now that I've got it all, all my elements together. So this one's gonna go here, this one's gonna go there. So we can start gluing. I'm just gonna go ahead and run couple lines of glue across this. It doesn't have to be completely saturated. You just need enough in the corners and kind of across the center to keep it from buckling. I like to line up, hopefully you can see that on the paper. It'll come up a little. I like to line up right with the bottom of my paper when I do a pattern paper border like that. Um, just because it makes it easier to do it on this side too. And then when it's in your book, it usually lines up pretty well too. Um, the top, I'm not gonna do that. And I'm just gonna do my best to make sure that they're kind of the same distance down the page for each one. I'll show you how I do that. Okay, so again, I'm just lining up the far edge and then that bottom edge of the paper before I press it down. Okay, so let's work on this one first. I'm gonna go ahead and I usually tilt my photo mats. It, you don't have to, but um, I kind of like to go a little wonky so like you could do one straight and then one wonky or both of them wonky. It's, he's gonna be tilted though, so I'll probably do this one straight with the um, gumdrops and then do the other one wonky. Okay, so just a little bit of glue on the back of my photo mat. Super light, it doesn't have to be a ton, just enough to get it stuck down and hold it for life. Okay, so um, I kind of eyeballed, something's crooked there. I think it might be my photo mat though. does not have to be perfect. Hopefully when people are looking at things, they're looking at your photos and this is just an accent. Um, it's just a fun way to get some photos on the paper. And I don't know about you, but I still go back and look through all of my old photo albums. And my kids like to too. So I'm gonna pop dot this. Just And then I'm gonna kind of make sure that I go a little bit more to this corner because I wanna be able to slip my photo behind that element. Um, 
So like if this were my photo, it needs to be able to fit in there with enough of a border and see how it, I'm bumping that glue dot in there and it's leaving me just enough. That's how much border I want to show outside of my photo. So that's perfect. Um, and then I'm gonna glue this. One of them can get glued down. The other one needs to be glued to this so that it's out of my picture's way also. So this one I'm gonna glue on the back and put down right here. And then this one I'm actually gonna glue on the front and stick it to that pinwheel. And then later when I add my photo, I could stick, um, use this to press it up. I could stick this down to my photo, but right now I'm just gonna leave it up and it's gonna give a little bit of dimension too. Just leave it like that for a second. Okay, so then we can pop dot these. I'm just gonna pop dot it on the corner again so that I can get my photo down underneath that so that it kind of, it looks like I didn't make this first and then put the photo on, which you totally do. You can make these, a ton of these in advance and then add your photos or add your photos as you go. That's entirely up to you. I think I'm going to use a little one and I'm just going to pop dot here in the corners. Um, I used to make scrapbook pages and sell them. So making them without the photos was like the only way I scrapbooked unless I was doing my kids' and then a lot of times I would build it first and then add their photos to it later. Or I would build one to sell and then one for our album. So while I was building, I didn't bother with the photos. Put that there. Okay, and we are ready for this top strip. And I'm not gonna worry about this page. I'm just gonna go ahead and put this one where I want it and then figure out where that one goes next. Just run a little bit of glue on the back, kind of hit the edges and then those corners. And I just want it like a quarter of an inch from the top. It's just going to be like the top border. And as long as it's pretty even, it should be good to go. Okay, so there's that. Move him out of the way. We can go ahead and put, if you want to pop dot your words, this would be, oh, that would be fine. You could also cut these a few times so that um, there was a little bit more dimension there. Uh, my Christmas is going to get a little overrun. I did this higher than I planned, so I'm going to do, I'm going to kind of overlap my letters just a little bit more and let that go behind the gumdrops. That works fine. I'm not going to pop dot or anything my, on mine this time. I'm just going to go ahead and glue for the sake of time. But feel free to pause, pop dot, and then come back or cut this two or three more times so that you've got kind of a dimensional letter. It kind of turns it into a chipboard letter if you cut it up multiple times and glue them together. I'm gonna to overlap the green on the red just for a little bit of dimension. You could also cut those berries again and make it the eye for the Christmas if you wanted the actual dot for the the word or the letter. I, I didn't cut a dot. See, and then that needs to tuck just a little bit behind the gumdrops. If you want to bring this down so that you're not tucking, you can do that too. Like you've got all this space in here still. Okay, so then this one, but it's still in the frame. Okay, I'm gonna move the cookie for just a second and glue this one down. So as you can see, I'm just doing like a really light line of glue. I don't use a ton. This one I want to be kind of off center this way. I'm gonna tuck it just a little bit behind that greenery. When your elements kind of overlap like that, it just kind of makes your eye travel across the page a little bit different instead of having everything be separated out. It's, pers it's a personal design choice, but that's kind of how I like to do it. Um, this is down lower than I anticipated too. I'm gonna leave gap behind his head and just glue him down so that I can fit that photo behind him. And then that side of the page will be done. And then we just need to line up for the other. Okay, so he goes there. Give him his little holly for his head. I don't wanna cover his eyes, so I'm just gonna kinda of offset right there. And then the dots. Put a little glue there. Set them down. And just let that sit and dry. I'm going to scooch this up against the side of my other paper just like this so that I can see where I lined this strip up. 
I'm gonna kind of scooch my elements down just a little and get this glued on so that it's behind anything else that I need to put on the paper. And I don't have to worry about trying to move it or move my elements underneath it or scooching it. However, it just gets it done and done right. So line that up and then go straight across the paper with it. Okay, and then this one's ready to be done. Since I did this one straight up and down, I'll probably do the same thing with this one. And I'm gonna put it right about there. I need to give my cookies room and I want them to be a little bit more offset by that green. And then these need room without blocking my photo, which is about right there. And then the ribbon's gonna go across this way and I'll probably, I'm trying to think how I can attach that without I think you can glue right here and then just glue those to themselves. Yep, and then glue right along there so that that photo tucks up underneath there. Let's do that first so that we can use these as one of our sample photos. So I'm gonna put some glue on this photo mount. And I want that right about in here. And then we can glue down. Right do pop dots on these two, at least for the bottom edges. Do some foam dots. I'll probably do three. Okay, so then I'm gonna put that right about there so that my photo will tuck under and I'm just gonna double check it with one of these. Make sure your photo can at least go under enough that you've got that like quarter inch gap right there. And then same with this, I kinda want those overlapped. I think I can go like that and then just glue down. I might go up in there. I'll just put a little bit of glue behind here and up in there. Those places where I know it's not going to hit on my photo mat. And then, and then make sure you're not over the edge of the, your paper there. Okay, so there's those. And my photos can tuck under both ways. And now let's do this. So I'm going to just put a little bit of glue on the edge here to attach it to this bow in the corner. Same with this one. attach those edges up in here and I'm just going to glue it like that so that I know that my photo will stick underneath there okay and then we've got these two mats and the cookies and we're done Okay, now that I have all my dots pulled off of the Cricut mat, I'm gonna go ahead and attach each of those with just a dab of glue on the corners of my cookies. And if you have tweezers or whatever, this would be the time to use those because they're just way easier to go ahead and pick up smaller pieces of paper, which I always forget to grab and use. As you can see, I end up struggling with it. Just go ahead and put a dot on each of the corners of the cookies. Do the same thing with the other cookie. Dab a glue on each corner. It's really just a tiny little dot. And then go ahead and put your little red dots over the top of that. And 
then once we have these cookies done, we'll go ahead and finish up the layout by um, placing those where we want them and gluing down our last two mats. My bow's not quite sticking, so I'm gonna just add a little bit of glue underneath that. Go ahead and glue down my cookies. And then go ahead and put glue on the back of the word cookie. Just a thin line on each of the letters. And attach that to your layout. I'm just going to go ahead and put it down here in this bottom left, kind of center it underneath those two photo frames and make sure it's not underneath any of my elements. And there we have it. We are all done with the layout. Um, and you're ready to add your photos. Thanks for watching. If you're interested, there are other um, paper files and things that you can use on scrapbook pages in the shop. There's a mega Christmas bundle that there's a discount for. And I will see you in the next video.